in general, machine learning tries to map a function uh, where, you know, one input variable is impacting an output variable, okay? So, like, let's say y equal to f of x is a function, okay? x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. And so, whenever we plot that x and y, let's say it gives some uh, weird structure. And so, we are saying, according to the universal approximation theorem, which I have already discussed, a well-guided and engineered deep neural network can approximate any arbitrary complex and continuous relationship among the variables okay like uh, if this is the uh, if this is the graph then um, neural network can probably track this and you know find a function uh, which will go through that you know very closely follow the pattern of that uh, mapping so this is important because if you can follow the pattern of the mapping from the training data artificial neural network is a supervised model anyway so uh, then if a new data point comes then you can uh, you know use that graph of yours to predict what will be the corresponding value of y based on the input value of x so that's why uh, uh, neural network have moved farther ahead than any other um, uh, you know machine learning algorithms to to um, to track or trace the mapping or to learn the pattern of the input data and predict on the output data. Okay, so this is a very important thing. So um, so now we talk about the forward propagation. Forward propagation is uh, when input data is fed in the uh, in the neural network in the forward direction, and you know the um, it moves from left to right towards the output. This is forward propagation, which I have already explained uh, the basic idea in the previous video. The, so the learning model finds out you know the parameters the age weights and biases which you also have talked during this learning phase using these two algorithms one is the forward propagation and the other is the backward propagation so in this example we will kind of uh, show that how the forward propagation works then we will tell how the backward propagation works so I have uh, I have used an example I found on the internet and I'll share the links of the pages also so that you can follow from there and uh, so the, the a particular example and uh, the network and the uh, values or weights or biases are taken from the, that example okay so um, I have also explained this thing that uh, um, in a neural network in a neuron there are uh, two ways in which the you know kind of the weights are combined the first one is so let's start from here this is x and x1 and x2 are two inputs and they are connected to this this is the one hit, hidden layer of this uh, neural network and this is the output layer and this is a classification uh, problem so we have you know the output one and output two and whichever has the higher probability will be determined as the final outcome of this neural network now you see x1 is connected to the uh, the first neuron of the hidden layer using an age which has weight w11 and this one with w12 and similarly x2 is connected to the first uh, node of the first neuron of the hidden layer using the age with the weight w21 and this one is w22 we have named the uh, two hidden layer nodes at h1 uh, and in the in the uh, bracket there is one which signifies is the one uh, first layer of the uh, of the hidden layers and similarly this is h2 that is the second node of the first layer of the hidden layer and we have divided the operations with a vertical line the left side is the summation and the right side is the activation function that was i was what i was telling so the summation is the first one where we call z is equal to sum of all the weights like w11 times x1 plus w21 times x2 because the input this is the input okay also so this is uh, impacted by this two uh, the inputs and the uh, corresponding age weights okay so and uh, along with that we add the bias so biases are for layer specific b1 is the bias for the hidden layer b2 is the bias for the output layer neurons in the output layer okay so we have to add the b with that corresponding and this part after the vertical line in the neuron is the activation function which determines the input for the next layer uh, of neurons okay 
So f of z, if we use the sigmoid function, then f of z is basically function of this uh, 1 uh, over 1 plus e to the power minus z, where z is given by this equation. So now you see we, uh, we do the weighted sum and then use that value of the weighted sum uh, to be the in, uh, you know, input of the activation function. And the, as I already said, activation function's job is to increase, in, uh, you know, bring in non-linearity into the uh, into the concept or into the network so that we, are, we can use. You can see this is a nonlinear function, right? To map this function or to design this function or to trace that kind of mapping between the input and output, we need to incorporate nonlinearity. Otherwise, it will just be a straight line and that cannot uh, successfully uh, categorize or, uh, you know, identify or predict future values with uh, very little error. So now you see uh, so the steps, uh, so these are the, the, all the variables now, uh, this activation function is the output uh, for H11 and this activation function is the output of H21 and these outputs along with this age weights goes to the next layer which is the output layer of neuron, output layer we call Y1 and Y2 and they produce the output. So the output layer also has two, uh, the neuron has two parts, one is the input which is the summation uh, and the output which is the again the activation function and similarly for the y2 now let's see how we calculate there are four steps in the forward propagation algorithm because these are like you know uh, this is a smaller network but the, the uh, first step is step one input at hiy1 so this input how we calculate this sigma so this is uh, calculated by as i said x1 uh, so it's sigma at h11 which is this node is w11 times x1 and w21 times x2 okay following that formula weight and the input uh, we multiply see this multiplication can be represented using a dot product also i've changed this matrix a little bit so now it uh, if you do a dot product you'll find w11 times x1 plus w21 times x2 Okay, see W11 times X1 plus W21 times X2 and then we add the bias. We can include the bias here also with 1 and B here so that every time uh, it will be, uh, you know, add the bias by itself. Now you see, we put the values from this list, okay, W11 is 0 0.1, W21 is 0 0.3 and X1 is 0 0.1 and X2 is 0 0.5. If we put the values, we get 0 0.41, okay, so that's the summation. Exactly same way we calculate W12 times X1 and W22 times X2 and then add the bias with it and we put the corresponding values from there and we find the number to be 0 0.47, okay? So these are the input at the first hidden layer, or the first neuron of the hidden layer. And now what is the input at the, the input means this one, the summation at the second input uh, we will calculate. Uh, but the step two is to calculate the output of the uh, of the uh, you know first neuron of the hidden layer. How we calculate the output? We just use this formula. That's the step two, the activation function, which is a sigmoid function for us. And what we do? We just uh, you know put this one over one plus e to the power minus this value, the summation, the first one, and then we get the number zero point six zero one zero eight. Similarly, we calculate the output of the uh, second neuron of the first hidden layer and we calculate exactly using the same function only uh, instead of e to the power for e to the power minus z we put this uh, this number okay uh, so this one 0 0.47 and get some value now uh, so this the output of the first hidden layer the neuron of the first hidden layer will be the input of the uh, neuron of the second you know the the out uh, this is the output layer so this outcome multiplied by the weights will be the input to the neurons at the out, output layer. So that's a step three, which is the input at yi, which is y1 and y2, okay? There are two, two outputs, output neurons. So this will be uh, this value times w prime 1, 1, and uh, this value times w prime 2, 1. You see this, w prime 1, 1 times this value, the output of the first neuron, and w prime 2, 1, times uh, output of the second neuron which is this one and add the bias b2 with that then we get this corresponding values similarly for y2 also we calculate the input which is a weighted sum of the output of the first one times uh, this the age weight w prime 1 2 and then w prime uh, 
W prime 1, 2 and W prime 2, 2, okay. So W prime 2, 2. So this will be W prime 2, 2. And when we put the corresponding values, we will, uh, the bias is added, okay. The 0 0.35 is the bias B2. So when we added that, we get this number. Now also we calculate the outcome of this using the activation function. So that's a step 4 output at yi. So f of z, uh, we calculate using the e to the power minus z, the va values are this and this values. And we get these two values. So you see, these are basically the output 1 and output 2, output 1 and output 2. Now uh, we have the forward propagation is complete, okay. So it's starting from the input, we make one complete pass over the, uh, you know, the a hidden layer and the output layer neurons and get these two outputs. Now uh, we will talk about the backward propagation where we will try to find out we have we have seen that when we get some output which is the predicted value okay and then we already know what should be the actual value because this is a uh, this is a uh, you know supervised learning let's say the uh, the actual value uh, should be here and the predicted value became here. So we have to calculate the distance, okay, the error. And we can uh, use the standard error function, the, you know, the root mean square error or the mean square error. And we'll show that. And when we find there is a significant error or a, a large difference between the actual uh, value which uh, we is given in the data set and the predicted outcome we are getting using this neural network, we have to do the back propagation algorithm to go back adjust the weights in such a way so that the output comes very close to the uh, input okay so how we do that we will see in back propagation that the error adjustment is done using the gradient descent algorithm which we studied earlier okay and you on the area uh, on the error curve if we take the gradient uh, the first order differential will find out where we find the local minima that means where the error is being minimized and uh, uh, corresponding weight values would be chosen so that uh, the final error uh, becomes less and less and we will see that in the back propagation algorithm.